Madam Chair, you're on. Okay, I'm on. Thank you. No, not on. You're on. You're on. <laughs> uh, crime statistics. Um, I'm prepared to talk about that. Tracy, thank you. And Happy New Year, everyone. Enjoy. Yeah, welcome to the New Year. And then I could uh, point out the. Uh, can't really apologize, but I do apologize for our last scheduled meeting was interrupted with, uh, I think it was about 18 inches of snow. And, uh, it was determined to be much better if the rest of the city was advising. Not to be like travel for the last thing. So, uh, unfortunately, there's a damper on the end of the last year, but welcome to the new year. That was a good one. Who is Hello, everybody. I'm uh, Detective Constable Tracy Smythe. I'm the Prime Analyst here at 43 Division, and uh, I'd like to give you a presentation about we'll only start off with the uh, collision statistics for the months however we're having some issues with the data this week and I didn't want to give you so I'm just going to pass on collisions for this week we'll start with the breaking enters and this is for the month of December um, for the year oh sorry guys I just uh, realized I made a mistake here I'm looking at stats here. I put the stats here for the first week. So this is from uh, January 1st to January 8th uh, of this year compared to last year. So we're actually down 46% over where we were last year. However, it's only a week. And uh, traditionally, small numbers usually mean large percentages. So don't put too much faith in that number. Uh, however, when you do look at the map, you can see that there are a number of breaking enters. We did have an individual that was breaking into all kinds of homes. He went on a little bit of a crime spree. And I am glad to say that our major crime actually did catch him. And our statistics dropped a huge amount once we put him behind bars. So that was good news. And then on to the robberies, the same thing. Uh, for the first week of the year, we're down 22%, which is basically in keeping with where we were. Last year, pretty well through the year, we were down in the 20% range uh, on robberies uh, for most, pretty well every week. At this point, though, we're just looking at two. Of course, we just finished the Christmas season, and everybody knows that during the Christmas season, uh, bandits like to get out there and do holdups and uh, steal from other people. So uh, you will see that that will probably level off. Tracy, may I just talk about, I, I want to talk about the break matters just for a second. Um, over the course of the last six months of the year, this division uh, initiated uh, um, a command and um, we were able to receive some extra funding and uh, we conducted uh, two uh, projects to address the break enters specifically. That uh, mail that um, um, detectives uh, might mentioning also for 14 of those break and enters that are on that board. So you can see how one person um, can have a huge impact on, on, on crime. So arresting the right person is important, uh, but it's an email in a haystack, if you will. So um, we dedicated a, a tremendous uh, number of uh, resources and, and hours to that investigation and we were able to uh, arrest somebody. Um, one thing that we did learn, and, and it's, it is disturbing, And, and we find is that oftentimes when we are uh, canvassing for witnesses or knocking on neighbors' doors, we discover that, yeah, they saw a guy who didn't really belong in the area and meandering around and looking in cars or, with, with, you know, whatever, and, and they just failed to call. And I know people don't want to be a nuisance and, and, and everything, but, you know, call the non-emergency number, 416-808-2222, and just report what you've seen. And, uh, one of our officers will attend and, and we'll have a look. Um, uh, don't necessarily call me because I'm not always at my desk. In fact, um, the boss here keeps me running from my desk quite a bit. But um, uh, call that non emergency number and report things early. It helps us A, prevent your neighbors and maybe yourself from being victimized. But B, can apprehend somebody who's most likely have, has already done this and has done many of these, uh, committed many of these types of events. So it's important. I'm very looking forward to the new year. Uh, we have to, for purposes of command, and we put this out in the media as well, identify our, uh, our priorities within the division. And residential break matters is definitely on our list to continue to uh, 
focus of our resources and our efforts in reducing that number. Not going to stop from all, but uh, we are focusing on it. Just remember the average uh, attempt on the residential home is one minute, and the average time spent inside is five minutes. So a couple of will make a big difference, and we can certainly help you with that. And, and to that, the last year mentioned a, a plate uh, that was uh, put on the, on the door. And in fact, this week uh, we had an attempt at a, at a unit that had one of those plates and uh, in an apartment building. And there were three other units were entered this one here, they just couldn't get in. So, a very simple, inexpensive piece of, uh, of, of, of equipment can really help thwart these people to move on. They don't want to spend too much time at the door. And uh, it's target hardening, it's not something. Person. But that timely call, call while we're messing around with uh, some of these protecting themselves can really have an impact on your Crime, one person, one call can make a difference. We'll move on then. Um, I had gone with the robberies, however, I don't think there's anything more to say on that. I'm asking something you wanted to comment at all. Uh, we are uh, down, as you can see. Uh, we're having difficulties in areas surrounding uh, our division. Uh, we're always cooperating, and uh, some of the seasonal robberies will hopefully drop off here. We are part of putting uh, resources to in the coming year, additional resources. All right, and our last map basically regards our vehicle thefts. And once again, you can see we're just about even uh, this week over last year at the same time. However, I would like to say that uh, there was a project that had taken place in Durham region, which we helped to participate in, uh, involving a number of thefts of vehicles. And they wound that up last month. And I'm happy to say that uh, a lot of vehicles were recovered as a result of their project. So, yeah, as crisp as it is, the thefts are identified for leaving the car to warm up, uh, leaving the car to continue to run by ran into the store for two seconds, uh, giving opportunity. And there are those that are just waiting for that opportunity. Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> and now we're moving on to our um, overall seven major crime indicators here. And as I said before, Big numbers, or sorry, small numbers, big percentages, so don't get too excited about this 88% down. However, traditionally through the whole year last year, we were seeing a decrease in sexual assaults. Uh, there can be a number of reasons for that, one of which is that they are more reported than they used to be. Uh, quite often, a lot of people wouldn't report them now. It's a little bit more open and transparent in regards to doing that. Um, assaults, we were down, and we were down through the year last year. Um, <clears throat> robberies we discussed, great matters we discussed. Uh, auto theft, um, I also spoke about, and of course we had the arrest last uh, last month that affected that. But of course we haven't had any theft doors um, at this point this year. So, And then overall, just for the week, we're down 46%. Um, however, that is, we're down 32 occurrences over where we were last year at this time. Okay, and there's a couple of things I wanted to talk about. I know that there's been some concerns expressed to uh, uh, PC Row in regards to uh, McCowan and Ellesmere area. Uh, there's a gentleman that's uh, been asking him to look into this. So what I did in the last couple of days is I did some research with the City of Toronto, and they basically got a safety ring for uh, the City of Toronto. They've got a whole map. You can actually access this on the Toronto Transportation website. If you go in there, what they've done is they've ranked, using a number of different uh, factors, they've ranked intersections, they've ranked um, roads, and basically what it is, it's, they call it a safety ranking, but it's actually the safety, the potential for safety improvement uh, index. And it identifies, compares, and ranks the roadway potential to reduce the number and severity of collisions. And what they use to determine this is uh, number of collisions, uh, fatal versus injury versus property damage collisions, um, the number and type of approaches and lanes, uh, collector lanes versus local road lanes, uh, construction, all of these things. And 
as you can see, they've also ranked. Now, this is from uh, 2007 to 2011. These are the latest stats I could get. But basically, these are the 10 top uh, intersections, the worst intersections for pedestrians in these years. And as you can see, there's only one as well. Um, the Carolyn Hills here isn't on there. However, you can see that this area here is a potential improvement, a high potential for improvement. So the city of Toronto does know about these problems and they are actually addressing them. So do you want to add anything to that? I don't know if I've got this slide up. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> Perfectly done. That was more than a password. Thank you. Just to that. Here. This was in the month of December. Uh, we have a new mapping system which allows me to do all kinds of fancy stuff, which I couldn't do before. It's not fun for me because I'm a bit of a computer geek. Um, but basically, in this area of Ellesmere and McAllen, you can see where the enforcement went on. And of course, we've got our two enforcement officers here. And I think you could probably attribute a number of these little crosses to them. <laughs> However, I know that our uh, manager and our crew, our community response unit, has also spent a lot of time up there, along with our uh, head projects up there as well, to address Christmas safety. And uh, as you can see, we have been in the area. We've had a number of uh, initiatives conducted by our station in support of the citywide initiatives such as RIDE, which we conduct year round, but are obviously higher quality. <coughs> and the uh, we'll blitz downtown for Rush Hour Roots. Obviously, we're not downtown in Rush Hour Roots, but we do have a few Rush Hour Roots within our division boundaries. And uh, I think you tagged all four cars that were in. <laughs> we are not contributing to major congestion of downtown four, but we are uh, putting our efforts out there to make sure the rest of our routes are open and hopefully assist in the mobility of traffic in the city. There's a major difference driving downtown now. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like you could get from one end of the city to the other in 20 minutes and half an hour. Oh, you've you noticed that distance? Oh, yeah. Since last night I was down. Yeah. Take it right across. So Dundas is easy. So just just to uh, uh, just help me here on speeding and the overall traffic uh, strategy. So we've added our two cents. The conversation is taking place on a corporate level between the Toronto Police Service, you know, the, the command really with with uh, the city. And one thing that we've asked is that um, the uh, transportation coordinating what when and where they're conducting uh, their repairs a little bit and sink it because when you have repairs on both Kingston Road and Lawrence at the same point, it just it, it creates such havoc in one area that you know it's fun with so many many cars at one time that uh, so we've asked them to to really look at that and see if they can schedule it at different times to help improve. So we look at that throughout our division. Uh, we are um, we are a major portal to enter the city here with Kingston Road. Hundreds of thousands of cars will ask to consider it. And not it's not just about the cars parked in the rush hours, it's really about you know our overall strategic plan there. And we saw a huge increase in these officers here in, in terms of accidents when they were conducting uh, the uh, construction along Lawrence there. We had a huge spike. So that's a concern. Sure. I have a question in, uh, with, uh, with the fact that we could be carrying some elderly passengers, dropping them off and trying to get them from wherever that they are. What are the measures that we should be exploring to bring that up? Because obviously the hard and fast rule is excellent, but there will be some instances where that's not helping us out. What are we supposed to do about that? About uh, the stopping? Like, yeah. So, uh, no stopping means uh, you can also actually engage in the loading or loading of passengers. So okay. being in that, so coordinating it uh, where uh, you know, the person's either right at the door or, or right, walking across the sidewalk right into the car. If you're actually in the act, um, you know. So you can stop and pick up someone. Yeah, you know what? The fancy term is standing. 
Yeah, it, it's that's when you're stopped and okay. And doing it. So uh, I have a case where I have an elderly person who has um, who has an eyesight issue also. Yes, yeah. so I have to go in and get him. Yes. So I was kind of concerned as to what I should be. Yes, and and so as I was, as I, um, I was explaining there that the, that the loading and unloading of passengers is, is the standing portion of it. So the stopping, you really have to find an alternative to to you know go around the corner. So you really have to watch the signs that are there, and um, you know it, it's it's one of those things where it really all depends on the circumstances uh, that, that are happening at the time. <clears throat> Stopping really means standing will give you that benefit. So really have a look at the signs. They're they're and the, and the timings. We're talking yeah. uh, the rush hour timings. Uh, and I, this has mostly been directed at those vehicles where the driver's gone off to get himself a, a Timmy's. Right. And, uh, right. The hell with everybody else. Uh, mm -hmm. Now I know. Yours is a uh, uh, the whole thing. Time is still causing. So Absolutely. Which is why that, that, that I wanted to know yeah. what are the other measures that we should be bringing up so that we can have a uh, yeah. uh, conversation. Yeah. And, and, and usually in the street, there, there's you know more, more in the rush hour routes. But if you're parking across the street and, and you know and bringing somebody to it, I I don't know if uh, I mean, you've seen the so yeah, there maybe a ticket for that. The, the, uh, the, Canada Post has actually changed their shift schedules right. to, uh, to accommodate the uh, out of laziness when they got on that. But I thought it was just easier to stay out on the front and do it because I'm on the pallet load. Everybody's going to have to adjust. And it might be time. The officer coming upon the, your, your vehicle isn't going to know that you're helping uh, a disabled uh, senior. Right. Uh, they're just going to see the car in the way, and, and you'll get the okay. tag. So uh, unless there's driveway or some arrangements to have somebody bring your, uh, your senior out and report uh, to your vehicle, you make a very short stop. You may also want to explore which uh, uh, permit, uh, which would exempt you from certain aspects of it, but research that okay. uh, and, and see if it applies. Um, if you're regularly uh, transporting right. people who have some that, that qualify themselves. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Okay. And the last thing I wanted to something I actually had reserved for everybody uh, for our December meeting, which of course got snowed out. Uh, we talked about cell phone robbers, we talked about cell phone street robbers a lot. There there is, I talked about this before, but I just wanted to bring it back to everyone's attention. There is a website, protectyourdata.ca, also commonly referred to as the blacklist. And what it is, if your, if your cell phone is stolen or lost, you should contact your uh, carrier to let them know that it's been lost as soon as possible. Because what they do is they actually act, they deactivate the phone so that whoever it was that stole it or picked it up or whatever or can't use it. And what happens is that many times people will buy used phones on EGG or wherever, and uh, you can actually check the status of it before you buy it. Make sure that it's not a stolen phone. And because of this, it's been in, uh, the blacklist has been in effect for about a year or so now. Because of this, I did a little study of our cell phone robberies. And as you can see, they dropped dramatically in the last year. As a result, I'm sure of the of the uh, blacklist. So from November 12, November 2012 to November 2013, 69% uh, of our robberies were cell phone robberies. And from November 2013 to November 2014, 39%. So almost half. Um, basically half. The reason I remember was so that I would have that. Stats, and I wanted to make sure that we were preparing out the talent, basically. Does anyone have any questions about any of this or any of the presentation before I hand it over to our Thank you. Thank you.
you know, this is obviously a, a, an excellent tool. As uh, many people got cell phones from, for Christmas and uh, other gifting. There are more and more cell phones out there, and I know these are fantastic stats for here. Uh, we've heard even greater uh, re reductions in the thefts of cell phones in other areas of North America. And once everybody's familiar, you get over the shop stone, they've had their phone stolen on the way home. And uh, I'd say once you get over being mad, and what you do to keep this in mind to minimize the impact by have it uh, located or deactivated. Yes, sir. Can I mention something about there's an app that is called Family 360. So you can track your kids, your phone's last, you can track your phone now. You can know when your kids reach home and when they leave home, kind of thing. Like, it's a, that's how that's good. I got four cell phones in time. So we can have, there you are. Let's say, for instance, something wrong with me. I have a bunch of time to find where I am. I accidentally can't get the phone or something. So they will track you down where it shows you how you're traveling and stuff, just like a GPS. Yeah, I need it for these three. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, I just got cell phones for them, so it's not a bad idea. <laughs> All right, well, that concludes my uh, presentation. Thank you. Oh. I'm not speaking. No, here. I actually, maybe I I will just mention uh, we got the uh, year end stats for our auxiliaries for 43 this year. Uh, last year, we, our auxiliaries completed 7,200 hours, which about 25 officers, so that's a considerable amount of hours. This year, they're down to over 20 officers, so almost 20% less, and they were up to 7,900 work hours that they're volunteering here in the community. So just absolutely amazing. And we haven't got the uh, full staff from DPSU yet, or our Provisional Policing Command, but uh, we certainly hope to be the number one in ours. Fantastic. Amazing people donating their uh, time to uh, help out the community and uh, wear our uniform. Canvassing and parades and a uh, number of things. I went to their uh, dinner gathering, their Christmas dinner gathering, and it was uh, very inspiring to hear them speak about how they uh, have been given the opportunity to do 400 hours in the community and they were hoping they could get 600 hours uh, as an individual. Remember, these are people that have uh, either full time jobs or otherwise engaged. And this is strictly unpaid time donated to the community. And I can't say enough about how much they assist us in our policing work uh, by canvassing. Uh, they take a, a, a uniformed officer uh, uh, to continue on with other uh, duties, uh, but they do the canvassing and locating uh, victims for us uh, or other functions in uh, uh, some other community events. It's just amazing. I'm always uh, uh, dazzled by it. And of course, it's even better to find out that 43 divisions uh, auxiliaries are. Uh, once again, leaving the city and asking for more. So, great yeah. stuff. So, if, any, if anyone knows anyone that it would consider being an auxiliary, uh, the Trump Police on our website, we're always looking for people uh, 18 years plus and ask to come to 43. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They are fantastic. Oh, yeah. There is no question about that. Um, Concerns? Anybody? Right. Community concerns? Are there some? I want to mention something. It's a safety issue of so, uh, so, uh, Don Lawrence and uh, uh It's been um, the new principal we got there is Mr. Hawk. Um, he changed some things for us that didn't been like that for 30 years and he changed. When you drop off your kids in the morning, there's um, we should have come from the one side, the south end, and we come up to the north end and come up towards Lawrence. So now we put the pylons, um, which is oh, just for the record, and I already mentioned to Mr. Murray about it and Papadopoulos. Um, I get to understand that he would not change it. It's very unsafe for these kids. So what we're doing now, we're going from the Lawrence side, two lanes going in, coming out to the south end. Uh, Norton, sorry, and um, the kids have to cross two lanes of traffic to go to the school because they're dropping off on the passenger side. So we go, it's a very dangerous situation. I spoke to a lot of parents and they, they send emails and stuff for it to change. And um, I know this 
Yeah, um, and I think Rudy is, is uh, presenting it here uh, for everyone's uh, attention. One thing that I've, I've you know, some enforcement there doesn't really look like it's a, it's a uh, enforcement uh, type, type solution that's going to solve this. We involved uh, the city, and um, certainly we've spoken to the, the principal as, as well about some of the rationale that goes into it. Um, the community to contact the local council, Mr. Moser, uh, whose office is just right there, right, yeah. and, um, and and as well, uh, Mr. Ch this is a solution that has to come um, from that end of the house there, and we but we certainly want to be at the table, and, and, and we we do have it on our on our sort of community complaint board there, and, uh, and we do. Want. I'm with you. I, I think there's a better idea there, uh, but obviously we can't just enforce our will. Or we want we have to work with. Uh, with the school board there, and um, everyone has a boss, as I always say. So yeah, that's fine. I know yeah. too many chiefs, uh, nice opinions. That's fine. <laughs> but um, what I want to mention, if I I said to him when I had a chance to talk to him, um, I said to him, sir, sure, whose idea is what this was? He took a second and he says, um, the parents. I said, no, I've worked from a lot of parents, and it's very unsafe. It's been like this for over 30 years. Mm -hmm. He took another second and he says, um, oh, it's the board. So I said, okay, the lineup's long behind me. Um, I just want to make sure if something happened to my kid or somebody else's kid here, I hope the board's going to take full responsibility for it. And he wanted to explain. I said, I have to go um, and then took a picture of my car. And I, I actually, I said to him, get up, and I said to him, you should go back to this school where you came from. <laughs> No problem. Like I said, but my wife went with uh, one of the guys there, very they, 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 uh, and my son went there, my wife's sister, everybody went there. Now we got a younger dog going there, and there is no reason for it to change. Don't, don't they have a reason why they wants to change it, that's what he wants to do. So what I want to know is, for the record, if something happens when you guys get a phone call, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And it's been a lot of close calls already, but I work with parents. And and it's you know and and I and I appreciate that we're hearing we're calls from the parents themselves. Like I haven't received anything, and, and I sort of would be the guy. Well, no, no, nothing happened yet, but there's been those calls. Right. Um, even those sort of things, we're also in the prevention business. We like to prevent it. Um, our, this is a very difficult situation just because of, of the, the, the situation that's happening. Paul's also working very closely with some uh, businesses up on, on Lawrence there. I would say uh, just very briefly that uh, Julie and I are responsible for answering the external email. So not calls for service, but kind of ongoing issues. We are routinely uh, kind of getting the car and boat and more help with schools uh, with traffic flow in regards to those closed calls you're talking about. Obviously, they're not happy, but we have not received a promo. We have for other schools, we've gone, but we haven't received for anything in the area. And so, maybe, really, you know, with your position in the community, maybe you can encourage people to give us a call. We're more than willing to help. Well, yeah, and, you know, email has been sent to them. Yeah, stuff, but you know, we're, we're willing to help. We just, you know, we, I, I can't dedicate an officer to sit there during all the um, yeah. uh, times, but, um, you know, if, if we know something's. Um, yeah, okay. If close calls happen, we can pay some special. They're just going to have to monitor and hopefully yeah. nothing serious happens. So I agree with you. Thank you. Yeah, I have a concern. I'm happy to report the TTC situation at the um, It's gone down. It used to be about four to five buses uh, back to back. back. And uh, because on the south side, there's no sidewalk. So they're actually joggers, and now with the winter, there's snow. Uh, it's, it's gone down, but they still want to go to the one one and call the TDC. This is a complaint. I'm going to be talking in front of the enforcement office. And, uh, I don't know if you can give a ticket to a TDC vehicle, but uh, it might just shake them a little bit because I think all the, all the right channels have been uh, communicated with. But or two, and sometimes I'm, I see two or three uh, people or a family jogging, and, and, and there's that one odd car who's in a rush or getting late to work, and they won't wait, and there's not just like an accident waiting to happen. <clears throat> um, 
Yeah, I mean, we can we can monitor. Six they make a random one or two times a week. Uh, Our problem is that we have to observe uh, that happening. One of the best ways to do it is uh, be a thorn in the side of the TTC and just keep calling and registering the complaints. They, they can, and, and we do it all the time. Have a look and see who was driving the bus at that location at that particular time. We do we do it all the time. I know they're capable of doing it, but this is something that we can involve our city partners. And I know that there's a lot of onus on you there to make those calls, and it becomes kind of repetitive. But um, truly, the squeaky wheel gets. It's almost like a frequent flyer yeah. program. But, yeah. You know, there's a three-on-one operator recognizing my voice and says, and I give the actual sure uh, bus number. Yeah. But uh, it's not uh, totally gone. You, you know who else to contact is our local counselor there. Um, he, uh, yeah. When the TTC when the TTC gets from the counselor, they, they tend to as you might have noticed in uh, <laughs> recent months in the media that the TTC is uh, revamping their service. Uh, hopefully we'll get a better answer in the coming months. Uh, I do note that you, you've seen that it has improved. I recall uh, these incidents uh, bringing them up uh, uh, last year. I can now see it here. Uh, and uh, that it has improved a bit. But hopefully, TTC again with their revamping of the driver training from the recent difficulties that they've been having uh, and their customer service uh, changes that they might be more willing to listen to. That. Yeah. And, and you know, when you're logged with 311 as well, so if you can point the counselor, to, that's an important thing because the counselor can get access to that and find out how many times you should the complaint and use that as, you know, some evidence, if you will, of, of uh, when these things are taking place. Uh, ultimately, TTC. Has to do with one very small solving any uh, ongoing problem, uh, but it, it's certainly an option uh, to us, and I'll make sure that our guys uh, are uh, reintroduced to that location. Okay. Okay. So, <laughs> <laughs> we just give you a ticket book, and you can. Help. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know if they just don't take any action because it's the same old street. Yeah, no, just keep calling. How do we get your neighbors to call too? <laughs> Have them call, I think. Mind you, I guess maybe they're not up at six or three people. Maybe. This is most of them are locked, yeah. But sure. So what about Bob Mark? And my neighbor is actually doing it seems that there's a lot of people in our tree who become managers and because we're so close to the school. But one of the effects that's happened to children's school at the end of our street, Highland Creek, we don't have side yet. So you walk on the road, right? It's just that simple. People have started putting their garbage on the streets rather than on their driveway or rather than on the end of their on the grass bush. Starts out with one or two neighbors doing it. Now people all the way up the street are doing it. So it got so it was so bad once I had phone 311 as well. And I said something and they said, well, it's waste management issue, blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. And I said, but they I have to walk half way to the property to get by dirt. And sometimes it's there. For a week or two at a time, because the city, I mean, the waste management, that sort of stuff, there's tons of branches everywhere. Okay. Is there anything you guys could do about that? Because now it's getting progressively worse. More and more people are starting to think, well, perhaps I'll throw my furniture on the street. Right? It sits there for a week or two before it's picked up. I'm looking for a couch. No, yeah. seriously. <laughs> no, um, so you know, I, I'll, I'll be completely honest with you. I don't know the answer to that question. I, I, I will find out, and I, I will get you the answer. Uh, they're guys, really, they're the only around the right. Why all that prevents? My law enforcement. They're, 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 they're
Bylaw, yeah, bylaw enforcement, Sean Maxwell. I'll do that. Sean yeah. Maxwell from the city. He's our local head bylaw. He used to come to our meetings, right? No, that was um, no. Schiller. Schiller. Okay, yeah. He's got a different dog. Yeah, so um, Sean Maxwell. Do you have a number for him by any chance? Because it is, it is. Do not memorize it. I'm going to be disturbed if you do. Sorry? I'm going to be disturbed if you yeah. have to bring that up on your head. You know, if you call for one, I'm not sure. Give, you give the, his name, he works with the bylaw office. I'm sure they'll put through or give you his number. The, the or, or Google it. The runaround I get, even when I do it, and my neighbors are calling too, is that it's a waste management disposal issue. So they have to be educated. Yeah. So it's like, well, come in Tuesday when there's a pickup, you'll see stuff on the street, right? Yeah. And they don't. I'll be honest with you. I I've never heard. I I don't know the uh, the answer, and so I would assume that, that there's a bylaw against it. I, I'm, there's a bylaw against almost everything. Um, so I, I'm sure that they'd be. Yeah. 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 Let me know, and I I mean I'm gonna look into that as well. We can look into that on our, in one of our other divisions. City is traffic safety, and it may sound like it's not connected, but if you're walking around it, or people are moving down the garbage trucks, are coming up further out into the street because you know, get by it, then it becomes a traffic problem. So, we will look into this and uh, see if we can well, light up one that one that us or uh, advise the, the residents of the street. Can they not take a look at it? Well, that's what I'm saying. We can, yeah, right, yeah way to address for a lot of questions that I've been asking. And I got to walk around these guys all the time. There's one guy in particular right across from the school, like where all the kids are being dropped off. He will not pick his garbage up and put it on the driveway. Like the enforcement people picked it up and put it on the driveway because it's told you, right? They actually, because it was in the middle of the road, they picked it up and put it on the driveway for him. Yeah. Right? And he leaves like hockey nets and chairs and all sorts of stuff like that. Yeah, there was one point that was quickly said, and I just didn't want it to be lost, the efficiency or the effectiveness of reporting stuff directly, if at all possible. And uh, we endure this in t all the time. Councillors doing a great job, but they will get stuff from citizens. And instead of that citizen just phoning us and letting us know, uh, you can be the citizen, staff member is the councillor, and I'm me. So you send something to the staff, and then it comes to me. I don't know what the question is or don't have all the details. So what I have to do, send it back to the staff, back to you. And it just keeps going and going. What did you mean by that? Back to him, back to you. And it keeps going. It is so much more effective and efficient just to have a conversation or an email, whichever, directly with that, if at all possible. So much more efficient and you'll get better service. And then I'll try to uh, write something up carefully. And the person like, I didn't mean that at all. What are you talking about? Because it's been... Pictures of this guy's garbage in the middle of the road. The telephone thing. He knows it's a waste management because they have an email address, right? And I said it's halfway in the road, like a block in the road. And then they dispatch somebody from a dispatch center because there's an issue with, with blocking the road versus waste management or something. I don't know what they do, but I took pictures. He sent Yeah, interesting. I've never, never had that question, but it, it, it is interesting. It's getting more and more that the more. More and more, right? Yeah, that's the one I said. Are there any more issues for the neighborhoods? No? 43. <laughs> okay. I just uh, noticed this uh, as we get back into the new year. Uh, that's as I hold my uh, management meetings within the station, and I just before I came down, I met the uh, with the platoon that's coming on for the evening shift uh, starting their cycle today. And we're all back, and it's New Year's, and we're ready to go. And so, is there anything you want? Everybody's a little bit subdued, and there's just a little bit hectic, and I guess we're all a little bit uh, uh, not tired, but uh, <coughs> relaxed a bit more from the holiday season and whatnot. And of course, we're all frozen stiff right now, still. <laughs> Uh, but it's uh, nice to know that we don't have any severe, super bad 
tragedy problems going on in our division. Uh, we always seem to be improving, maybe not with the ATC buses or, or the, the garbage, but uh, things are going very well in this end of the city. And we're quite happy to be here. That's because of the police station we've got out there. You know what? I have also said that recently with the chief and the deputy chief. When, and the uh, again, as I've here. attended my management meetings with my uh, yeah. fellow unit commanders around the city, and uh, I'd say I'm the best station I have ever served in in my 27 years on this job. Uh, my opportunity. We are trend setting in so many ways to leave this meeting. And the CPLC and what we're doing that downtown is watching how we're doing it, and uh, it's just a pleasure to be here uh, and to see everybody. And uh, it is there's some amazing things that go on here that are unique to the city, and I still say that we can and are. That's all communities can be, and we do nothing but improve all the time. So thank you for that. I'm looking forward to another great year here. Uh, and if anybody was uh, wondering, uh, Superintendent Patton, good in, uh, in the next few weeks. Good, good. Tell looking forward to this. You've been wonderful, but we, uh, we still miss him. <laughs> I'm looking forward to coming back. <laughs> I get to inherit his uh, uh, hard efforts in, uh, over the past three years here in this, uh, at the helm of the station. Nice. But thank you. Thank you.